Okay, Unami, Central Bucks friends, whoever is joining me here on YouTube. Today, we are going to be talking about my favorite thing in the whole world, which is major scale theory. But also, we're going to be talking about minor scales. Because one of the things that um, we get a lot when we start getting into creating your own solos, creating your own songs and writing, is what's the difference between major and minor? And how do I decide which one of those scales I want to use? So I want to start by talking about major scales, and then we're going to talk about minor scales. And we're even going to learn about um, how they can relate to one another and actually be very similar in a lot of ways. So for major scales, we're going to start with the C scale. Why are we starting with the C scale? Well, it's uh, the only scale that our trumpet players know. Just kidding. Um, it is the first scale that our trumpet players learn. But the reason that we like the C scale is because um, it has no sharps and flats in the key. So if we're looking at this, and I'm kind of writing weird and backwards, so uh, just forgive me, but we've got C, D, E, F, G, A. Oh, that was weird. This is a strange way to write on the chalkboard. B and C. All right, so there's your C scale. No sharps, no flats. Um, if we look at the formula for a major scale, from C to D is a whole step, from D to E is a whole step, from E to F we have our half step, meaning that there is no note in between them. So if we look at the piano, C to D is a whole step, we skip a black key. D to E is a whole step, we skip a black key. E to F, there is no black key in between them. So that's called a half step. F to G, we've got the whole step again. G to A, whole step again, A to B, whole step again, and then again, between B, uh, looking at this upside down, between B and C, there is no black key, so we call that a half step as well. So if you look at this, there are two half steps in the scale. One of them is between E and F, and the other is between A and B, all right? So that's our major scale, that's our C major scale, and that's what makes it a major scale. So for example, if we took the formula of whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, if we took that and we applied that to any other note, so let's just say we started, um, ignore this for a second, I'm just going to draw down here. Let's say we wanted to start on an A. If I start on an A on the piano and I go up a whole step, that brings me to a B. If I go up another whole step from B, it's going to be, I have to skip this white key to go a whole step. So I'm going to go B, that's a C sharp is my next note. All right, and then if I go up above a whole step, or a half step above C sharp, that puts me at D. A whole step above D is E. A whole step above E is F sharp. A whole step above F sharp is G sharp and then a half step above G sharp is A. So if we're looking at this right now, I've got a C major scale and an A major scale. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this A major scale that I just created, and I'm gonna turn it into a minor scale. And the way that I'm gonna do that is this. There, there's a bunch of different types of minor. We have uh, Phrygian, Dorian, Aeolian. Uh, if you've never heard these terms before, these are, these are called Greek modes. And they're a more advanced style of learning, but the most important style, there's also a melodic minor and harmonic minor, but the first minor I like to introduce when we talk about theory is something called natural minor, okay? Um, it is also known as the Aeolian mode, if you know your Greek modes, but we're going to call this um, natural minor, all right? And I'm going to just put the natural sign there because I don't feel like writing natural. So we've got natural minor scale. And in order to make a natural minor scale, we're gonna mess with the third note, the sixth note, and the seventh note. So if I go to the A and I go up A, B, C, I'm gonna take the third note and I'm gonna put a flat next to it. You're gonna notice that there's already a sharp next to C and a flat next to C. So what that's gonna do, it's just gonna cancel each other out and just make it a regular old C natural. Then I'm going to go to the sixth note, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the F sharp. I'm going to put a flat next to that. That cancels the sharp out. So it gives us a regular old F. And then I'm going to put a flat next to the seventh note. 
So again, next to the G sharp. And if you look, what that leaves us with is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and A. So if you're paying attention at home, you might be looking and saying, well, wait a second, this has A, B, C, D, E, F, G. This has A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They're the same scale. They have the same seven notes. The only difference between C major and A natural minor is that one of them starts on C and one of them starts on A. So the, the scales are actually the same seven notes with just a different starting pitch. And that will take it from sounding what we often refer to as you know light or happy or major, and then we'll turn it into that darker, maybe sadder or more mysterious kind of minor sound. So if we listen to this on the piano real quick, you can kind of hear the difference. Here's the top scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Here's the exact same scale, but I'm going to start it on A. start to realize these are called relative majors and minors. So C major, the relative minor, is A, natural minor, because they're the same notes. It's almost like when you have a relative that has very similar DNA. I like to call it the strange cousin um, that you don't look forward to seeing at holiday parties. If you don't have a strange cousin, you are the strange cousin. Just a heads up. Um, I know that because I'm the strange cousin. So we've got C major and A minor. The same exact seven notes creating two completely different sounds. So the question that I get a lot of times from my middle school students is, what's the difference? And the short answer is, there really isn't a difference with which notes that you're playing. The biggest difference is what notes, especially if we're soloing, are we gonna base our solo around? Because if you remember anything from um, chord theory or if you've ever studied any things called chords, a chord is typically the summary of the scale. So for example, um, if this is my scale, if I go every other note, I take the C, I take the E, I take the G, and the B. And if I play all four of those notes together at the same time, that's going to create a C major 7 chord. The reason we call it a major seven is because I'm taking the first note, the third note, and the fifth note, but I'm also taking the seventh note. So that's where that seven comes from. So it's a C major chord. If you just saw C major, you would just play C, E, G. If you see C major seven, you're going to play C, E, G. You're going to add the seventh note from the major scale. Down here, what I have, if I take every other note, I've got A, C, E, and G. So that's going to give me what's called an A minor seventh chord. So these two chords are related just like these two scales are related. However, you'll notice that this has a C, E, G, and a B, and this is an A, C, E, and G. So if you're soloing, yes, you're using the same seven notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, A, B, C, D, F, G, however you want to look at it. Um, however, if I'm soloing over A minor, I'm going to be really trying to land on or start the solo off of these notes. If I'm soloing in C major, I'm going to try to land on or highlight or start off of one of these four notes. Um, so while yes, the scales are the same in how they're built, um, they're just a little bit different in how we might approach them. Um, however, it's really important to understand that they are relative. All right. The next thing that I want to show you is this. Um, whenever you wanted to try to figure out what is the relative minor, because I know all my major scales, Mr. Myers. I know my C scale, my B flat scale, my A flat scale. I know all that. If you want to figure out what the relative minor is, meaning the, the minor scale that uses the same notes, all you have to do is simply find the sixth note of the scale and start there. So for example, one, two, three, four, five. If I were to start on the sixth note, 
and just go from the sixth note up to the sixth note, you'll notice that would give me the natural minor scale. So the relative minor can always be found by either adding a flat three, flat six, flat seven to your major scale, or um, by going and going to the sixth note and starting your scale off that. So hopefully this kind of makes a little bit of sense as to the difference between major and minor, because depending on how you look at it, there isn't a ton. And if you know all 12 of your major scales, you actually know 12 different minor scales already, 12 different natural minor scales. And then the um, Greek modes are a whole other lesson that we'll do another time. So hopefully this has cleared up some of the um, difference between major scales and natural minor scales, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting to look at the blues and we're going to analyze um, how to create different scales that we can solo with over the blues. And it's really important that when we get there that we understand the difference between major and the relative minor. So if you need to rewatch this video, if you need to ask me any questions, you can always email me, contact me on Canvas, um, and I'd be happy to uh, go over any of this information. So I hope you've enjoyed this major scale, natural minor scale theory lesson. Uh, please, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks.